next thing you'll tell me he has the power to fly or something. Well, Jack can't fly, but he did learn how to jump high. Uh, yes, that. By strapping a giant boulder on his back, which compared to his height, he can determine to weigh 39 tons. Jack learned how to leap high enough to use that tree. Crouching tiger hit so a hundred feet. So these trees are pretty big. And this is a bunch of 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 so much your dollar? It was only a matter of time until Run he found his way home and took well, off to get to the search home. But it took a lot longer than it probably should have. Fifty years. Yeah, good thing time travel makes you stop aging for some reason. But Jack's a good-hearted soul. Like right. a Boy Scout who hasn't discovered Twitter yet. He can be pretty gullible when it comes to more devious opponents. Also, he continues to prolong his lonely journey over and over just because he frequently puts the needs of others before his own. Still, the forces of evil should watch out for Samurai Jack. Damn. Damn. I see if I got a rewatch to rewatch the, the, re the, the series. Secret headbands are as many as the men who died in their pursuit. What's so special about some scripts of headbands? Legend says they were created by the gods, or they can grant the wearer supernatural power. But in truth, the headbands only bring pain and pain. Such was the case with Afro Samurai. Nothing more than oh, wait, did his parents really call him Afro? Talk about setting big expectations. Well, no, it's a nickname, but even if it did, have you seen his dad? I think oh, that's the one headband. Yeah, yeah, let's look at it. Oh, and hey look, he's got the number one headband. Here's how this works. The person who wears the number one headband is said to rule the world. And the only person who can challenge the number one is whoever possesses the number two. In contrast, anybody can challenge the owner of the number two for the right to wear that headband. And thus, gain the right to challenge the number one. So, like, you just work your way up so that only one guy in the world can challenge you? Where do I get one of these headbands? Then no one will mess with me. Actually, the opposite would probably happen. Which young Afro witnessed firsthand when some freak named Justice showed up with the number two and killed his father right in front of him. Why does this always happen? You know, I always thought parenting was the hardest thing about being a dad, but at this point, I think it's just actually staying alive if your kid's never going to do anything great. Or just sticking around. Yeah, that's really fucked up. Them. Despite knowing that he was effectively creating a future challenge, Justice left Afro alone to mourn his loss. So, of course, Afro swore revenge and started learning swordsmanship under a swordmaster named Swordmaster. Who wow. the hell is naming these people? Uh, uh, right guys. Swordmaster's training of sword mastery, Afro learned the traditional samurai fighting styles of Kenjutsu and Kendo. Kenjutsu is all about how to kill an opponent as fast as possible. Well, Kendo is more about discipline and being zen and stuff. Naturally, Afro preferred the more kick-ass one. Right, Swordmaster's goal was to refine Afro's body and mind, instilling upon him a sense of mm. honor or fushu. That's an awesome but show. But that right? didn't quite mesh with Afro's thirst for vengeance. So when he found out that Swordmaster had the number two headband all along, he knew what he had to do. And now he could take down the guy who killed his dad. Alongside his new friend, slash burden, Ninja Ninja. Oh, come the f*** on! Where'd this guy come from? Now, uh. don't we look like shit? How you been, man? Well, it's not entirely clear. He's there, but at the same time, not there. Ninja Ninja is believed to be the guardian of the number two headband. But all he ever really does is talk. Talk and talk some more. We got arrows and grenades and shit! You ain't got no damn, dude! Though it's also possible Ninja Ninja is simply a figment of Afro's mind, brought about by psychological stress. You know, I have an imaginary friend. Aren't you a little old for that? Not for Al Gundy! He's a gun! Who also talks to me? He tells me to do stuff. Okay! Jesus. Anyway, to be honest, calling Afro a samurai is a bit misleading. He 
It's actually more akin to a ronin, a samurai with no mask. And so, with his sword perfected, after a while, he kind of the world searching for justice, like, carrying an arsenal fit for revenge, but, but, including but, 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 his father's sword, so this super long blade has lasted through decades of battle without much issue, perfect for taking some ass. Well, he also has a sneaky sword that can be used to kill enemies with ease. Perfect for taking some ass. Well, he also has a sneaky sword that can be used to kill enemies with ease. Perfect for taking some ass. Well, he also has a sneaky sword that can be used to kill enemies with ease. Perfect for taking some ass. Well, he also has a sneaky sword that can be used to kill enemies with ease. He's not afraid to play dirty by attacking with his sandals. But while on the road to justice, Afro's number two headband attracted all manner of dangerous enemies. Luckily, he's more than capable of dealing with each and every one. Jesus, damn. He's strong enough to cut other swords in half, throw his sheath through another guy's throat, and even tear off metal arms. Pretty impressive. Damn. Well, many modern metals have tensile strength as high as 80,000 pounds per square inch. Afro is fast enough to Damn. cut bullets out of the air and do it with a laser beam. I should note that it's not uh, a no, laser based beam. I'm just it bounces so, off of like a fuck I'm just saying. It doesn't explode upon contact and it's literally labeled a laser. I'm this good. means Afro blocked a beam that moved as fast as light. More than Ooh. 670 million miles per hour. Get this. That laser beam came from a robot version of Afro. Talk about metal! This Afro droid could easily smash up a car, and our boy Afro just tore it apart! He survived getting hit by rockets, including this RPG that cracked like into the giant cliff face. Like RPG in a motherfucking backpack! I think I saw that coming. This tree nearby is most likely a Japanese mountain ash, which can sometimes grow as high as 30 feet. With that in mind, we compared its height to the fragmentation created by the explosion, and compared the resulting surface area to the sheer force for granted. With this, we deduced the RPG's <coughs> possible explosive yield must be around 72 tons of TNT. Damn, kind of mega rocket launcher are these guys packing? Where do I get it? And he stood in his way, and after he could get through them all unscathed, but by the end, he cut down justice, took his revenge in hand. And prove to the world that Afro Samurai is no one. Why you gotta kill all my men? Why you gotta kill me? Nothing personal. It's just revenge. I'm also Samurai with the absolute voices in the stuff. Alright, the combatants are set. Let's That's send this debate once and for all. Me. But first, do, look do, at these do, swords. Do, Maybe you want to sharpen my knives for my blue apron do, meal tonight. I'm glad to... I know you've probably heard of Blue Apron, the leading meal kit delivery service in the U.S. But did you know about all the different kinds of delicious foods you can make? Like the honey chipotle glazed chicken with poblano and lime rice. There's plenty to choose from, since they offer 12 new recipes each week. All you have to do is choose the two, three, or four that sound best to you, and you deliver it right to you. Plus, it's super simple to cook. It's got easy to follow instructions and perfectly proportioned ingredients. They're not GMO, and the meat has no added hormone. My favorite part is still it's like a master chef making creative and delicious meals with my own hands. You guys really need to try it out. It's pretty nice coming home knowing I'll have a delicious meal I can whip over these. So check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free at blueapron.com slash battle. That's blueapron.com slash battle to get your first three meals free. But right now, it's time for a dead battle. Okay, we should go the first. It's on, it's so it's on, on the middle of a bridge. That's awesome. Your sword smells of blood. So does yours. Oh, there he's just crazy. What the fuck did you do? Something like this is that's awful. You kind of say. Oh, it doesn't work. Huh. You jump good. Oh, uh, thank 
Ale muszę do Versus Lucy, oh yeah, we really have an area of charge, oh yeah. It's gonna be really interesting, such to uh, like, I see Lucy, like, I never would not have be like, Lucy's is really fucking strong, so it's like, I'm sure. But yeah, I can't wait to see where this, this episode is gonna be fucking great. At the end of the video, I just wanna thank all my coach drivers and anyone who supports on Patreon, and I hope you enjoyed the video, have you enjoyed it? Video. You can find the mystery on Twitter and you can find and support me on Patreon. Patreon. And also, if you like the video, please leave a comment. I always appreciate it. Don't comment for you. And finally, also, you can find the links to the on Patreon in the description below. And finally, if your favorite anime reviewer, Justin Rotaku, and current video game creator, sign on. Bye bye.